Hey, what's up, YouTube? Here today to uh, make a video and uh, show off some of my uh, video game collection magazine. It's uh, about 65 issues, I think I counted, of uh, just Game Informer magazines. And then a few issues here and there of uh, Game and Pro, the official PlayStation magazine, official Xbox, and about one or so issues of Nintendo Power. I mostly started uh, going with Game Informer back in the day because uh, as I went multi-plot, I figured it was the uh, best choice. I used to uh, have subscriptions to uh, just either the official Xbox magazine or the official PlayStation magazine or even Nintendo Power I used to be subscribed to back in the day, but once I started getting multiple systems, I figured Game Informer was the best. And as you can see, since I've been subscribed to the series, I've kept almost all of my issues. Yep, I figured, uh, there's no point in throwing them away. I figured if, uh, I use them for the strategy. I mean, you got to remember at the time when I was, uh, collecting these, there wasn't many uh, people who had high speed in the DSL, so it was AOL 56K modem. And even though for the most part you can get anything online, it's easier to get it out of a magazine. I have a lot of strategies and codes that will help me in all these games. I'm not going to show you all of these issues because it's a lot, but my very first issue with Game Informer is issue 102, and it's the first Devil May Cry on the cover. Then I have issue 103, which is right around uh, when GameCube and the Xbox first launched. These issues, this issue right here is from November 2001, so it's the end of 2001. Then right here, the issue after that, issue 104, we have Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. With Devil May Cry advertisement on the back. Now, in this issue of Game Informer, I believe they gave Devil May Cry a uh, perfect 10 score, I believe it was. Let me see if I can uh, find that and show you guys. And here it is Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty 10. Well, anyway, that's my, uh, magazine collection. While I'm at it, I'm going to break out my, uh, strategy guide collection and show a few of you guys those. First off, we have Socom 3, U.S. Navy SEALs, PS2. I don't think I ever had the Socom 3. I'm pretty sure I knew the first or the second. Somehow I just managed to obtain the guide, so I might have to look and, uh, get into that game. Next up we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I actually 100%ed this game on my on PS2. I have the 100% uh, save file on my uh, PS2 memory card. Got to get it backed up. I only got one memory card. I need to either back it up on my PS3 and get the adapter or something to back it up. But 100% use this strategy guide to help me. The map in here for the hidden packages help me collect all those. Uh, 100 packages. Resident Evil 4. Have it for PS2. Still have the game. Beat it. Great game. I have all the Resident Evil series. I have 1 through 5 all on uh, PS1, PS2, and PS3. Assassin's Creed. I got this for either a birthday or Christmas gift. Uh, when I had it for the uh, Xbox 360 when I did have it. When I sold my Xbox 360, I later got rid of the game and still kept the guide. So I'm uh, probably going to have to re-look into uh, getting the guide. I mean, uh, the game. 
I figure now uh, this guy costs me more than what they get, you can get the game for me. Get the game for like less than ten dollars nowadays or something. So I figure it's worth uh, re-getting it that that I gotta beat it and that I got the guide. Might as well re-get the game. That's that's why I plan on doing with uh, with uh, all the I'm gonna re-get all the games that I have guides for. As long as I have the system. Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. Not really sure how I uh, came across getting this guide unless it picks up for really cheap, of course, and I probably don't pay a cover price, I'm assuming, because I don't have a Game Boy Advance, and I've never had Link to the Past for Game Boy Advance. I used to have it for uh, Super Nintendo, so I'll probably replan on picking it up for Super Nintendo. When I did have it for Super Nintendo, I used this guide and I beat the whole game. Was a little bit like uh, couldn't get lost in the whole music guy, but I beat the game. And some games I just have to use a guy. I don't mind doing so. There's too much time in some games to uh, commit to without me really looking up some things. Next up, Dino Crisis. I used to have one and two on uh, PlayStation. Sold them. Never really got them. I'll have to uh, re get Dino Crisis. It's a great game made by Capcom. Plays out just like a Resident Evil game with dinosaurs. I picked this guy up for, I think, a nickel in the clearance section in, it, in a Kmart department store years and years ago. One nickel. I think when I brought it, I didn't even have the game. I brought it just because it was a nickel. Then later went to re get the game and eventually sold it. And now I'll have to re get it. Dot hack, inf uh, dot hack Infection, I used to have the game on PS2, got really far into it, sold the game off, and when I did, never got rid of the guide. Probably will pick up this game again, being as I have the guide. It's just, uh, makes it pretty much worth getting the game when you have the guide, and to re pick up these guides a lot of times costs is about as much as the game, or almost half the price, or more sometimes, so. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. About 80% into this game on my file. Just have little things to do like collect the horseshoes, packages, and miscellaneous stuff. Which I'll have to go back and use the guide for and that's what it's for. Just never gone back to it as I got new games in a long time ago. Next up, Metal Gear Solid. One of my favorite games of all time, the game I beat the most, my favorite series and franchise. I'm not even sure how I happen to get this guy, but I have it in my collection. Metal Gear Solid. Great. I have the black label, but strategy guide says great hits. I don't know why it for God, but a great game to have and a great guide to have for a great game. Next up, some Nintendo 64 strategy guides. We have the, uh, totally, it's pretty funny how they say that, totally unauthorized Castlevania strategy guide. Now this is for the Castlevania 64 game on the Nintendo 64. Used to have the game, of course, sold it off. Definitely, definitely we're going to have to get it because I, I'm a big fan of Castlevania series. And I did love the N64 version, despite many people not uh, liking it. I loved it. GoldenEye 007, the famous first-person shooter that just set first-person shooter standards. Have the game. Never got rid of it. It's one of my dad's favorite, favorite, favorite games. My dad's favorite game of all time. Is the first golden eye, followed by the second one, which is the blue card. Uh, the world is not enough on the N64. This guy's a little uh, bad condition. The cover sort of uh, taped on and whatnot, but uh, of course I'm glad I never got rid of this. It's a golden eye guy. Next up, Super Mario 64 guide. It's missing the cover in the first few pages. It doesn't start here until page 7, 
but the rest of the guide is still all there. The back of the cover is there. All that's missing is the uh, cover and the first few pages. Of course, uh, no point in throwing it away. It's a Mario 64 guide. In fact, uh, on my save file in the game, I have all 120 stars. And I have all the stars in the game, no partially thanks to uh, the strategy guide. Next up, Doom 64 strategy guide. I love the strategy guide, I love the game. My dad's second favorite game next to the uh, GoldenEye. He's a big Doom 64 fan. And I loved the game. Great guy to have. Especially when you don't have uh, complete games and stuff with manuals, especially on cartridge games. Except for maybe Sega Genesis, it's a hard case, but games like N64, NES, and SNES. Only collectors really have complete boxes, so uh, most people don't have the manual and stuff. When you don't have the manual, it's really nice to uh, have the guide. Even if it's a game, you won't use the guide. It's, to me, they're really nice to look through pictures, but uh, I tend to stay away from guide, uh, strategy guides of this generation. And, uh, the cover price on them is normally almost the price I'm paying for games that I don't pay normal retail price and I wait for price drops anyway, so if I get guides I have to wait for them to go on clearance and get discounted out to the less than the dollar section. Donkey Kong 64 had the game around when it first came out. I remember picking it up brand new at a department store. Got the map for it. Awesome platforming game, awesome, awesome. N64 is probably my favorite sit console and system for uh, platforming games. Between Super Mario 64, Donkey Kong 64, and Banjo Kazooie, it's just uh, Nintendo dominated in the platform series. Just as Xbox gets credit for a shooting series, maybe a Sony for its RPG series. Uh, well, Nintendo gets the award for platforming. And last up but not least, my favorite guide in my whole collection, probably my biggest and most expensive cover price, Final Fantasy XII Collector's Edition. Now that's because uh, th there's two guides to this game, there's the regular guide and the Collector's Edition guide, I have the Collector's Edition game and the guide. The difference is, it's a lot bigger, it comes with a little bit more information, comes with hardcover, and it comes with about a 30 or 40 page or so art book of Final Fantasy XII, which you really need to have. Uh, like I said, this is uh, my favorite, favorite guide. I love the art book, I love the hardcover of it. It's just a really, really quality guide. Anyway. That's it for my video game magazines and strategy guides. I'll update as I get any new uh, magazines or games as I get a bigger collection. Enjoy.